$20 from Anonymous that says, shout out to all the techs behind the scenes, keeping everything running smoothly. I have $100 also from Anonymous that says, we love GDQ and look forward to it each year. This is for our dear friend Rob, who lost his battle to cancer this year. He loved games and animals, so let's save them for him. Another anonymous donation for $75 says, I love the cause and love the show. We love that you love both those things. $50 from Tom249 that says, work is over, time to enjoy AGDQ. $10 from Mokai that says, if everyone in Twitch chat donated $5, we could reach the 1 million for a great cause. Do it, chat, I believe. And we are definitely on our way to a million with currently sitting at $821,000. Thanks to everybody who's donated so far. And thanks to everyone who will donate for the rest of the marathon. $50 from Timothy Day that says, Hi, hey guys, I am sad I was not able to make it to AGDQ this year. When I tried to register again, the cap was already met. I've had the stream on nonstop and it feels like I am right there with you guys. You all are getting closer to the one million mark. Let's make it happen. Here's $50 to save the animals. I'd also like to announce that our website is back up, so feel free to get right back into donating. I have $20 from Anonymous that says less than three. $10 from Benjamin102. I was about to donate for Contra 3 when the incentive was met. $3,000 in a minute. Well done. Put this to the Dark Souls 3 glitch exhibition instead. Which, by the way, the Dark, the Dark Souls glitch exhibition is one of the only two remaining uh, incentives that hasn't been met yet. And it's not too far off, it's only about $9,000 away. $50 from Zero Key that says, greetings from Germany and from the German Czech stream. Keep up the good work and save those animals. On Save the Animals, Kill the Animals, Save the Animals is currently ahead by $420. Save the Animals is currently sitting at eight, $88,432. Kill the Animals at $88,012. $50 from Atma Starfish. It says, I recently found out about GDQ about three months ago and loved watching the videos uploaded on YouTube. So glad I could catch AGDQ this year. Looking forward to the Taz block. Please put this towards Undertale Genocide. And Undertale Genocide is the other incentive that hasn't quite been met yet. Currently it is sitting at $62,283 out of $100,000. With Undertale being the last game of the marathon, there is still plenty of time to get that in. $80 from Anonymous, it says, first time watching this event. Everyone is super talented and this has been super entertaining. Keep up the great work. There's an Anonymous $150, it says, listening to Mr. K's advice and putting $150 towards saving those animals from being slaughtered by evil space pirates. Let them die in peace on their planet. Pixels are friends, not food. $10 
ten dollars from a nonsense. Just watch it. Just finished watching the Final Fantasy run on YouTube. Didn't know the reset button could actually be useful in a speed run. P.S. Let's do it differently this year. Let's save the animals. $20 from H. Haynes that says, Greetings from Sweden. Been watching since 2014, but first time donating. Keep up the good work. And I have $20 from Roger Godspeed that says, Co-op Contra was my favorite pastime for my dad and me. Konami code required. But I'm done. The Konami code is going to be necessary for Mr. K to beat Contra 3. So if everyone is ready for Contra 3... <laughs> well then, why don't we go to some Contra 3 right now? All right, um, so I am flattered and I'm touched that you all donated so much money for Contra 3. So thank you so much. That is very generous of you all. And yeah, I just, I, I, I'm really touched that you all donated like this much for this game because this game has a special place in my heart because uh, I've been running it since 2008 and I'm still not very good, but I'll try. Uh, some shout outs are in order. Uh, shout outs to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, one of the alumni had helped me with some of the math for this run. Uh, shout outs to Herb Blatt, my kindred Contra spirit, who is listening somewhere across the ocean. Shout outs to Mike Uyama, who is the original Contra 3 speedrunner. <laughs> <laughs> Just a washed up old man. That's but Contra life. 3, it's a good game. Uh, so a couple things uh, really fast. I set the estimate at 15 minutes, uh, which is a little bit generous. But um, if anything goes wrong in the first two stages, I'm just going to flat out reset. Uh, that's just how it is. Um, yeah, if, if I mess up, I it's bad. So. I have a little bit of room in my estimate for bad things to happen, and hopefully you won't see that, but just to prepare you for the worst. Playing on the only difficulty. That's right. Okay. Uh, someone want to count me off? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, six 5, five four, 4, 3, 2, two 1. Go, Contra! Let's attack aggressively. So my last run was deathless. I make no promises for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Contra 3 has uh, a pretty enormous exploit that you're gonna see very shortly. Basically, he wants to cross a certain point threshold and bomb as he dies. Because he gains a one-up Yep. Yep. <laughs> that was a stage. Which that was a stage. And the, and the game that counts the uh, game over transition screen and the yeah. stage clear screen as the same screen. So yeah. if you still have a life, it's just like, okay, you beat the stage. Yeah, the check I is did. so simple. I it's definitely just did. like, oh well, the game is fading out. Clearly the person has either died or beat the stage. Does he have a one up? Yes? Okay. Now the trick doesn't work in the overhead stages, so he'll still uh, have to play through the entire stage. Why would you want to skip those? Those are amazing. <laughs> so he's taking a pretty particular path with uh, the mines that he's killing because they're worth a certain amount of points. Um, as you can tell, there's no point value that you could see during gameplay. It's only during the transitions between stages. So Kay's got to keep this all kind of in yeah. his head. And he specifically dodged Crush because uh, do Crush can give you double points uh, so if you kill with it. Laser can give you double points also. Oh. Um, as you notice, like he didn't use laser for the boss, or at least the the killing blow, because laser can accidentally hit the boss twice, and if that happens as he dies, then he gets double points. Ah, okay. And so he set up his points counter here so that uh, when he dies, he should be able to activate uh, the death warp again. What's in this pit? Oh, it's the next stage. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> St 
Stage four is pretty tough, so we should probably keep a little bit quiet for this. Um, I don't have a bomb, and I need one, so I'm gonna die on purpose and ah, continue. That's right. And it also this also sets, sets the points point back counter. to zero, so he can do the same uh, same type of warp from you know stage one. Yes. yes. So stage five is another overhead stage, and he'll actually be picking the right side, even though uh, Kyle uh, normally picks the left side for speed purposes because the right side has a chance for a laser, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And he got it. It's a 50-50. By the way, these overhead stages are pretty, uh, they're, they're tougher than they look. Yeah, especially since uh, it's very easy to fall off during these sections because, yeah, Jinx. you're just barely over. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> Sorry. Jinx. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Well, I am the fun killer, so you know. <laughs> there was a bad spawn there, so even if I had made it, it would have been really tricky. But. We're back in business. There we go. <laughs> I'm not moving, I don't care. <laughs> You can duck under the fireballs, a lot of people don't know. I don't really care about points right now, so I'm gonna be uh, using another continue in the next stage to set up. Yeah, the double points thing can happen on this boss too, but yeah, if he's gonna set the points back to zero, then it's kind of irrelevant. Just go ham with laser, really. Yeah, and there's a pit where uh, that allows for a very fast continue here. Yeah. Yeah, pits are really good for dying. <laughs> it's a general <laughs> fact about video games. I think it'd fit right within a GamePro Pro tip. With Game Pro. <laughs> I like how you bounce when you fall in the pit. Yeah. It's really <laughs> awesome. I don't know why, but... All right, here we go. So what Mr. K is going to do is spawn many, many, many of these cocoons. So shrimp are worth 30 points, which is very not much compared to the 1,200 that the red guys are. So got to be pretty particular with where a score has to be. Abracadabra, Time. I win. Final score. Time. You might have remembered there was like an ending sequence with credits, but we death warp past that too. <laughs> so. 
And uh, sorry we didn't get to use uh, the sheet. We had, we had the math all worked out for some possible scenarios. But yeah, that's Contra 3. Hopefully it met expectations. Thank you all so much for your donations. Really appreciate you uh, getting this in for us. For a good cause, the Brent Cancer Foundation. And Contra 3 is just a valuable game, because it's a good game. Give them a round of applause for that amazing Contra run. <laughs> I am so glad that we made the donation center for that. That was a crazy thing to watch. It's coming up very soon. We've got the PS2 block with some amazing games coming up. So you don't want to miss that. In the meantime, I have a couple things that to read here. First off, I have $50 from Mutes that says, Greetings from Australia, long time watcher, first time donator, been having fun with all my favorite games beaten in the time it takes me to finish a coffee. Money goes to the Dark Souls 3 glitch exhibition. And I have $100 from Jamab that says, Thanks to everyone involved in the setup and running of this great event each year. Always looking forward to it and love it every time. Donation goes towards my favorite game of last year being on stream for as long as possible. And we here at AGDQ want to say thank you very much to Tiny Build. Tiny Build is an indie label started in 2011 with their first game, No Time to Explain. They're responsible for the cult hit competitive platformer uh, speedrunners. They work with indie teams all around the world and they're currently working on Hello Neighbor, a stealth horror game with advanced AI. I have seen that game, and it is very fascinating. So definitely thanks to Tiny Build, and please go check out their work. 